investing companies go into places like Indonesia and Malaysia, oh, yeah. Amazon. And they those destroy, are, they're destroying the indigenous cultures, as you know. So they destroy the giving uh, the Indians <laughs> infected blankets and and wiping out the true knowledge, the ancient. Uh, knowledge that connects us to uh, to natural sources and to the earth well, and to all things. That's, that's right. Those there are still some cultures. Their numbers are dwindling. Well, yeah. But there's still some cultures that have that natural attachment to the living earth, who live off of the earth on, and are in tune with the natural ecology. And these diabolical demons, who are the powers that be, um, are deeply threatened by that. They are deeply threatened by the natural life process of the earth and by people and peoples who are in tune with it. So their solution to that is to eliminate them, to mm-hmm. annihilate them, oh, yeah. and play the survivors. And, and, and Exactly. Now, Richard, I have a question for you. Um, obviously, this has been going on for hundreds of years, and we could probably easily uh, trace it back to the, the last war and Project Paperclip and so on and so forth. But what I want to ask you is... We since all of this stuff has been going on and trillions of dollars is going into all of these different press special projects and yep. since as one of my other guests said, even the president's clearance only goes up to about twenty three and there's another thirty or forty levels above that and yep. the the top brass are not allowed to know certain things. They can't even go to Area fifty one because it's not a need to know. So who is be running the show of all, I mean, who has access to these maglev trains that connect the world's, uh, underground and, and all of these exotic projects and possibly ET, uh, research? Well, you know, I think the answer is complex. Number one, um, there are uh, multiple factions who control, control what happens on this planet or who attempt to control it. Um, and, so the answer to your question is is uh, not simple. It, yeah. it, it means it means that depending on the project, depending on the technology, yeah. uh, depending on what is being done, different individuals or factions or organizations or um, agencies yeah, would have right. access to it or would have knowledge of it. Right. And that that would apply even within an, an agency such as the Pentagon and the United States Military Command, for yeah. example, where you have uh, different military agencies. You have the Army, uh, the Marine Corps, the U.S. Oh Navy, God. the Air Force, and yeah. they vie for funding and yep. access and, and resources and personnel among themselves. And then you have to understand that the CIA has oh. its own clandestine cells embedded. Oh, my hundreds, God. Several hundreds of clandestine cells embedded within the military structure, okay? And Many then you which have, don't know, yeah, and then, each other. And then, well, it goes, it goes beyond that. And then you have yeah. the contractors <laughs> that are embedded, such yeah. as Blackwater, now known as XE, and, uh, and, and others. And, yeah. and, then, and then you also have the corporations who interface with both the contractors and with the military agencies. And so right. you have all of that going on within just one department of the federal government, which is the Pentagon, and that's just one agency within one of the larger uh, oh, governments God. on this planet. So you see what I'm saying? Yeah, and, I do. And then there would be multiple programs and projects going on. The Army has its own underground facilities. The Navy has its own underground facilities. The Air Force has its own underground facilities. Then there are the underwater facilities, where I've been oh. told, you know, that corporation and the United States Navy and then others as well. And then and what have, about the second space program that uh, is well? The, well, let's get, get to that in just a second. Oh, okay. But then you also have then also um, the anecdotal evidence strongly suggests that you have various extraterrestrial or alien factions here right. as well. Right. Who also have who also have an underground and undersea presence in their own bases, and then sometimes jointly with clandestine uh, terrestrial human factions. Right. Such as, uh, various. Uh, clandestine factions in the United States military. So it's extremely complex. Yeah. Now, as to the as to the secret space program, yes, it does appear that there is not only a secret space program, but there may be more than one secret space program. Plural. Well, <laughs> and those would be run. Uh, the information that I have from a variety of sources suggests that 
um, the secret space programs, at a minimum, would be run by a consortium of the most powerful aer- aerospace companies. Yeah. Uh, and also, it would be run by clandestine elements within the military structure in the United States, um, you know, the Navy uh, and and other other agencies. The Navy has some very advanced technology. Uh, I mean, yeah. really, really advanced technology. And then, of course, you quite possibly have the same scenario in other major countries like Russia and China and Japan, uh, all of whom have their own space programs. And then you have the European Space Agency, so you can see there, too, you have the possibility for multiple space programs using not only chemical rocket technology, but probably electrogravitic uh, technology for non-conventional modes of propulsion as well. Yeah. And there's circumstantial evidence that points in that direction. And I would, my best bet would be that all of that is happening and that an agency like NASA is, it's a real space agency, and for decades, it has been putting up satellites and uh, interplanetary probes and also um, asteroid rendezvous missions, as well as manned missions, uh, yeah. you know, dozens of them over the last few decades. So it does have a real space program, but it seems to me, from, from the totality of what I have seen, read, and been told, that there are probably at least a couple of other secret space programs with their own technology, their own astronaut cores, and uh, massive funding. But this would be from uh, the black budget. It would be off the books. Mm-hmm. We, you know, it, it really begs the question, what is the end game? What is the point to all this? I, I mean, this, ex- on that. Yeah. this exponential... Uh, taking over uh, of the, with the military industrial complex. I mean, at some point, it's like they're bacteria or viruses going through this this beautiful planet of ours, this natural habitat, and they're just simply uh, terraforming it and turning it into a virtual reality or something. I mean, wh- where is this supposed to all end with uh, us all? It was for death of the planet, and you're right. They they are essentially like vampires or leeches, like yeah, parasites. They're sucking our life juice out. Yeah. You know, Dwight Eisenhower, Dwight Eisenhower warned about this uh, uh, just before he left office uh, half a century ago, and he, and he warned about the danger of the growing power of the military-industrial complex and what a threat it was uh, to our way of life. People didn't listen to him then. Uh, a lot of people still aren't listening to him, and the military-industrial complex has only grown uh, more powerful in the decades since he left office. It's now uh, very large. It's funded by the hundreds of billions, if not the trillions. It's and that has interfaces all- with the drug uh, cartel money and the mafias and, and the Vatican. I mean, it goes on and on, doesn't it? Yes, it, yes, it does. Um, <laughs> very much so. Uh, and again, I discussed this in the Richard Souter briefing, and I point out how organized crime does uh, interface with and work with national governments, including the United States government and and with the alphabet soup. In fact, when the CIA went into, or not the CIA, but the forerunner of the CIA, the OSS, um, went into um, Italy during World War II, it made common cause with Italian organized crime. So already starting uh, in, in the World War II era, there was a very close working relationship between organized crime and the United States Intelligence Service. Uh, That relationship continues to this day. The the federal alphabet soup, the alphabet soup agencies, and organized crime uh, continue to work together. It's a way to move around personnel, hit Mm -hmm. men, and alphabet soup agencies absolutely assassinate people. Now, this is all known at the highest levels of our own government. Well, and they move around... They move around a lot of money uh, across borders. They right. move around hit, hit men and other gangsters. Right. They, they traffic personnel and other people across borders. They traffic all kinds of contraband, narcotics, and um, right. wep- weaponry. Um, you, you name it, they're doing it. But what it amounts to is that, in a sense, the 
the United States government, uh, to a large degree, is simply one more criminal syndicate, albeit right. a very large one. Right. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Well, I you couldn't agree with you more. Uh, now, the question is, this all can't go on. We know this. We're, yeah. you're, you're also a very deeply spiritual person, and I read your Kundalini tales, and they're very, very moving, and uh, they take you to places that you, you know, mo- that I wouldn't have, have been to uh, on a spiritual level. So, um, there's, uh, is this a spiritual divide, a, a, maybe a, a divide between spirit and materialism? And, I mean, obviously we can't, there's no time for anyone to begin, uh, even if we instantly knew everything you know, uh, that doesn't even cover what we don't know or what we don't know we don't know. And I know so, only a small, I, I, in fact, the more I learn, the yeah. more I realize how very little I do know. I know a great deal more than I right. used to. Yeah. I mean, I, I know vastly more than I used to. But yeah. in the process of learning vastly more than I used to know, I have come to understand how very little I know. <laughs> and that's humbling. In fact, it's a hallmark of gaining uh, knowledge. If you're wise as you gain knowledge, the more you learn, the more you understand how little you know. Absolutely. You know, it's well, it's, it seems that I'm not it's saying you shouldn't learn. I'm not saying you right. shouldn't learn. I right. think every human being should learn as much as possible about virtually everything. It's, I think that's one of the most important aspects of being, being human, the opportunity to, to learn, to know, to understand. It's a great privilege and at the same time a great responsibility. Um, there's no end to it, literally. Uh, yeah. Intellectual curiosity is one of the hallmarks of a mature human being in my in Absolutely. my view. Absolutely, yeah. But so few people in our society have it, and, and we're suffering for that reason. Now, you asked earlier, wh- where is this going? Where does it end? Right. Well, if it ends badly, it ends in the death of the planet and perhaps the annihilation of the human race because what we see are very dark, diabolical plans that are in motion. Yep. I mean, if, well, look at it. We are seeing massive pollution and uh, contamination of the world's oceans. I offer as Exhibit E, uh, Exhibit A, uh, the British Petroleum uh, kill shot, essentially, with the, the failure of their Deepwater Horizon oil, oil rig in the Gulf of Mexico this past spring. Um, the, the, the devastating of that, of that catastrophe are with us to this day, and the effects will continue to be as for, for years to come. Uh, it's just been uh, uh, a catastrophe for the ecology of the Gulf of Mexico, and, and that, that is what... And, uh, Richard, can I ask you a I, quick question? Now, because <coughs> you mentioned uh, how is it possible that that's tied into your uh, material that you wrote on page 42 and 43 of your book, uh, Hidden in Plain Sight, where you talk about an underground base in the Gulf of Mexico that may go... I, I don't know. I, I don't okay. think that the Deepwater Horizon accident was pertaining to an uh, undersea base uh, per se. Now, right. my information indicates that there are undersea bases in the Gulf of Mexico. However, I think that that was uh, a purposeful attempt Oh yeah, uh, by British Petroleum to uh, drill into a very high-pressure... Uh, undersea deposit of oil and natural gas with the intention to rupture that uh, subsea deposit and, and let it out. In other words, I think that um, uh, British Petroleum consciously and with great malevolence set out to cause great damage and harm to the Gulf of Mexico. That's my personal opinion, and I'll tell you why. Okay. Um, well before this this um, drilling well blew. They had indications weeks, my understanding is even months before that, that they were dealing with a dangerously high-pressure formation down there, that it was very gassy, and they proceeded to keep drilling, to keep drilling, and even uh, as they drilled into this deposit, they had indications uh, long before it blew out that the pressure was very high, uh, that it was dangerous, that 